go live. Can you hear me okay? I've I hit the it's button going live. All right. And it seems we are live. <clears throat> What is up, Dunkin' Donuts Munchkins? That's apparently Danzig's favorite snack. <laughs> it's that in ranch dressing. Welcome to Guarsenio's High School CD Book Review. Today, we're talking about the first Danzig album. We're talking about Danzig 1. I don't have it laid out for the CD player. Give me a second. Hold on. Folks, we got a very special guest today. We're talking with Santos Montano from Old Man Gloom. And also, as I said in the Instagram caption, you're probably what, like the premier East Coast Danzig singing impersonator? There was a time when I was part of New England's premier Danzig tribute act. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it, it didn't last long. I wish that that had persisted while Old Man Gloom fell away but you know you can't choose your friends i guess Wait, <laughs> that, that doesn't apply that doesn't that doesn't work here it kind of does you 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 have your friends and they chose to not do the danzig band with you anymore <laughs> well weirdly nate nate was also in that danzig band so it, the whole thing falls apart when that happens but you know because da nate has has always had one million bands yeah. yeah, he was like, "Oh, somebody's starting a band in New England. I don't give a fuck. I'm in. I'm in." And it just, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a dancing band, so he lucked out. Yeah, we only played we played a show, and he wore a leather jacket with no shirt on, so he committed. Which I oh, like. a classic move. I've I've done it one time, and you, you it, the zippers on the inside feel like shit. But folks, here's yeah. here's the proof. Here is the boring ass Def Jam CD. <laughs> I bought this album at Second Spin, the the used record store in Colorado that I always shopped at when I was a teen. Um, I, uh, I I I want to find out from you, Santos. How did you first get into Danzig shit? I feel like we've talked well, about it before, but tell the tell the people at home. Yeah, I mean, come on, people have no attention span. It's not like they're keeping notes on us. You know, they need they need refreshers, like the little family tree in the beginning of uh, Hundred Years of Solitude. If you don't go back to that shit, anyway. Yeah. I had an older <laughs> brother. I had an older brother who was a metalhead, and he he became misfits obsessed pretty early, like in mm. junior high, which meant I became misfits obsessed in in like. I was four years younger, so I was like in, you know, whatever, subtract four from junior high, I was there. Right. Um, so when Danzig One came out, we got it the day it came out at the record store, like on release day, went to the fucking store and bought it that day because we were waiting for it. That is insane. Yeah, we were, and we were fucking, I mean, we were blown away. We listened to it nonstop for weeks, weeks. We were obsessed with it. Yeah. Can you give me give me one uh, second? I think something weird might be happening with your uh, AirPods. Oh shit, man! I knew this was gonna be a, <laughs> I knew this was gonna be a problem. The yeah. Stupid! I have a microphone and it shit the bed today. No, it's okay. Uh, can you? Uh... Working or do I need to do something? Uh, they're, they're cracking a little bit. Do you want to switch to just like your computer microphone? I can just go to the computer one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try that. Let's see if that's any better. All right. I feel like it's, we're getting some fuzziness. Fucking goddamn fuzziness. Um, there's a lot of fuzziness just there. Uh, <laughs> in the chat, uh, Adam O'Donnell is asking, how do you like these snakes? I like them sneaky. Love a sneaky snake. Um, how about these pumpkins? Well, I would like to have them on my lawn during Halloween so that my neighbor could complain about it and say, hey, take that shit down. And I would say, listen, motherfucker, I'll kill you. How are right, you doing, Jeremy? I can hear you. Is it better? It's better. Okay. It's a lot better. How we, I think we uh, accomplished something. Folks in the chat, let us know if Santos' audio 
is any better. So you you literally went to the record, record store the day the album came out. How did you even find out about this? There was just through like magazine ads? Or I mean it wasn't really my teenage brother did all the legwork. But yeah, right. it was like ads and zines and fucking yeah, metal rags. I mean, I don't think I in eighty eight, I don't know what it would have been. I mean, we, we used mm. to get Metal Mania, of course, which was uh, big a classic. But I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, we got Maximum Walk and Roll, Walk and Roll. Um, I, I don't remember, but he knew he was there, and we went and we got it that day. Um, you know, and we we had just nothing. We had no misfits like actual vinyl or CDs. It was mm. all cassettes. So, you know, until, like, the box set came out, I didn't even know what songs were on what record and <laughs> all that. And, like, didn't know the lyrics to anything. It's, it's, it's weird that kids now, like, have access to lyrics because in the 80s and even up through the late 90s, there was no misfits lyrics or anything. You just had to guess and still get things on cassettes, you know, that people Totally. Gave yeah, I'm... I, well, I... I that specific thing I'm so curious about because yeah the you own you you only know about lyrics through booklets and I'm fascinated about just people finding I don't know anyone pre-internet age who like showed up to like get someone's first album that's the that's the bizarre <laughs> thing is that this is Danzig is being marketed as an entirely new thing at this point totally it's, like Rick Rubin is trying to distance from the misfits. So your brother had his ear to the ground to know about this coming out. Like it was advertised, but to, to know ad- was, exactly what it was is pretty crazy. I feel the dancing obsessed people did exist though. Pre this album, like there really? were people who were just like the misfits were it for them. And, you know, even Sam Hain to a degree mm-hmm. were, you know, huge so when danzig came out there was a small amount of people who were like this is you know this is glenn danzig from the misfits new thing we got to hear it and i think just like Mm -hmm. i don't know like anything i'm sure there was a lot of people who heard it was like this is bullshit this is like (laughs) weird country you know dark cock rock but you know we 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 were in especially because the imagery was so sick and just it was so straight to a teenager's heart totally it was it was masterful the imagery on those like the the goat on the cross the yeah. jesus getting strangled you know the upside down cross with the skull all of it it was perfection uh, yeah i i guess that's like so you heard Shit, you, you 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 listened to this record <laughs> all the way through and you were like this sounds sick no notes Is he fro- are you yeah, I mean, still? I was a, I was pretty young. I mean, eight, 88, I was 11 years old. So, you know, I was kind of probably just watching my brother and seeing what kind of reactions he was having and being like, totally, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for but, sure. Go. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, you know, just on as an aside, I, the way that I moved to the East Coast was by selling all of my, my and his old Misfits vinyl. That's how I left New Mexico and moved to New York is by selling all the cool Misfits stuff I had. No! Uh, well, I and mean, it turns hey, out, I mean, you moved, you, you moved house, baby, as the Brits Yeah, said. I mean, I became not a townie, which is more valuable than any record. You yes. Know? No <laughs> townies out there. You know, live your I'm, life. I'm a new townie, and let me tell you, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new to townie life. I love seeing a weird. I love seeing a weird bad cover band at a bar. I'm obsessed. I, this is. I love this. It's fine until you like, you know, start getting really into smoking meats or get a motorcycle or mm-hmm. into like spe- one specific VW from the early 70s or those weird towny things that happen where it's like, dude, this isn't going to fix your sad. This is this is only going to make you sad. <laughs> so just, you know, towny is a slippery slope. Yeah, 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 for sure. See, OK, so for me. I I find this album. I find the Misfits first. Uh, I get into the Misfits because a uh, I I got sent to uh, 
summer school to like make up some high school credits because I had just started becoming a little shithead kid and hanging out with bad kids and like breaking shit at the mall. And so I got sent to a summer school and there was a girl I had a crush on and she would always wear like misfits uh, like T-shirts. So I went to Tower Records and I bought collection one and I made myself get into them. Like, I I feel like the first time I listened to the misfits, I was like, what the fuck is this? (laughs) Like, this is what everyone this is the big T-shirt band. Like, this is what everyone is into. Especially that first collection, because it's all over the place and it, it's every section of it sounds completely different some of it sounds unlistenable other parts sound awesome that that collection is crazy it's fucking crazy there's like stuff that's punk but then there's just stuff that sounds like you know what i would try to write if i was seven years old and i tried to write an elva song like that's what i would make <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, and like, but, correct me, am I, is, there, is there live stuff like shoehorn right in the middle of it also? No, not on that one. There's like okay. a live Halloween. I feel like on the collection too, there's some live stuff. But okay. I, I grew to love the Misfits. And I feel like with every Danzig project, my first reaction is, what the fuck is this? And then I love it. <laughs> like, I went... <laughs> I found out, I was like, I I would talk about, I got into the Misfits and Op Ivy at the same time. And then I, I like, a guy showed me Rancid, and they're like, this is what Tim Armstrong grows to do. And I'm like, oh, shit, this makes so much sense. Like, this is, like, the full vision of, like, what he wants his sound, uh, his sound to be. And I still like Op Ivy more but because of the charm, but I get it. I'm like, uh, it's cool that he got his like full vision realized sound. And then a guy, the same guy told me that Danzig has his own band. Like this is what Danzig is supposed to sound like post misfits. And then I bought it. And uh, my first listen through, I was like, this is fucking weak. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, this is, you're saying Danzig one, you bought Danzig one. I bought Danzig one. And I was initially just not into it because I think not i think just i had heard so much like more aggressive metal and like the imagery doesn't totally sell you exactly what you're going to hear on it i think i was expecting something more brutal some like more distortion on the guitars but they're because that's the every time i listen to this album i still there's still moments where i'm like come on rick we couldn't have just like one (laughs) One dial on the guitar, like every time that John does like a, a pinch harmonic, it it I hear it. I he does hear pinch it. harmonics. Johnny, John <laughs> doing Johnny does pinch harmonics. I mean, here's the thing: you wouldn't know because the gain is so fucking low <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> when he hits the harmonics, it's like it's like the ghost of a harmonic. It's like what? <laughs> it, by by dancing two. I think it's the perfect, it's like the happy medium of, I think, I have to imagine that, like, on Danzig 1, it's a lot of wrestling, uh, it's a lot of Rick Rubin going like, no, 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 clean, everything is clean, shut the fuck up, you sound like Elvis, we're gonna make something, we're gonna make a dark rock record, we're gonna clean all this shit up. Everything is so tight. There is no fucking reverb to be found on this album. Yeah, you know, I was listening to it today because obviously I need a refresher on that album because I haven't heard it seven thousand times in my life. But I was yeah. listening to it. <laughs> the fucked up thing is, I still hear new shit in it every time I listen to it. Every like, time. Now that I know that's Hetfield, obviously as an adult. All I can hear is Hetfield, and I'm like thinking about myself as a teenager. Like, how the fuck didn't I just go? That's James Hetfield. Like, I know, it's so obvious. But today, listening to it, I just there's something about the the, the fucking dr- the drums are bone dry. Like, dry. There's no, re- there's no reverb. It's like the sna- that snare drum might as well be a goddamn cardboard box. But I know. <laughs> everything about it sounds so good and especially coming from the misfits and sam hayne which were both so noisy so over the top 
Rick Rubin just inserted all this space into that album. Yes. And I, I bet you're right. I bet Danzig was like, what's all this fucking empty space about? Like, fill it up with distortion and howling and moaning and like, whatever. Right. James Hetfield, fill it the fuck up. But I'm sure it was a battle for him to keep that space, which ultimately makes the album so spooky and so cool. I love it. I, I Here's the thing. I have grown to absolutely fucking love it. I think... I think the, the, of course, you and I have talked about this. The pinnacle of, of the Danzig is Danzig 2. The, everything sounds great. There's a little bit of reverb. There's a little bit more, like, balls on the guitars and the bass and stuff. Like, the bass is just, I, you, it's pro, I, like a DI of a bass. <laughs> like, <laughs> no amps, just no amp eer, eerie right into the board. But I... The Only drums do was sound too like he's lazy to bring the amp in. He was just like, nah, not doing yeah. it. Not today. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me here, Glenn. Do I gotta play an amp <laughs> though? Uh, but yeah, the drums sound like he's playing on a couch. Uh, but the album is perfect. It's it is weird. It is perfect. Uh, I. I, I, it is, it is an album that grows on you, and you realize that all of this space is here to create a vibe. And it is also, it's Rick is is probably like get all that distortion, all that reverb out of here. This is about Glenn's voice. We're getting all. Totally. He he was like, we're doing the polar, uh, which Rick Rubin does love to do. He loves to bring people in and go. You do this. I love this thing about you. I hate this other thing about you. We're doing the polar opposites of both. Like we're going to do the opposite of the thing I hate about you, and we're going to make it all about the thing that's great. And he re it's, and it's interesting because he did that throughout his producing career, obviously, and then very famously got made those Johnny Cash records, which are fucking unbelievable. But right. this is 1988, and Danzig to most of the world is no one. So it's not like he's, mm -hmm. you know, pulling Neil Diamond out of retirement and making some weird record with him like right he's taking danzig and being like this is what you're good at okay i'm gonna do something completely different and somehow it just fucking works and yeah. you know like the slayer records he was making at that time they don't sound like this you know no. they sound like slayer records they he you know and he knew that that's what slayer was and he's like oh we're making the slayer record okay push the slayer, the slayer button on the, the console and make the same record that sounds the same nine times he did that but for danzig i mean you really have to give him credit. Like he, it was premeditated. He did something. It was, it was real. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it is part of the genius of. I feel like it's, it's weird because I think that Rick Rubin, uh, had like his ment his instincts and mentality are are correct, but I think that there is very clearly a version of his own advice he also is not that he's not taking like he doesn't realize what his <laughs> weakness is and can't get rid of it because there is a turning point for Rick Rubin where his instincts for this kind of stuff d falls away. It's weird that him and Danzig seem to fall off at the same time. I've always thought that that was very, very bizarre. Yeah. They leave each other well, and I mean then they both kind of fade. I have to imagine that if Rick Rubin went into wherever Danzig was and Danzig was lying on a couch in a moo moo, you know, just <laughs> eating some sun, some sun chips, he'd be like, Glenn, get your shit together. Like, get out of the moo moo. Let's get out of the house. But somehow nobody was able to get Rick Rubin off the couch and out of that moo moo. And like, I you know. know, so I think you're right. I think there was some advice he wasn't taking from himself. And well, I don't know, but the, I will say that he, he made a lot of really good records in like the in like the early two thousands. I mean, I That's guess mostly true. those Johnny Cash records and that one weird Neil Diamond record. So, right, he came back where Danzig still hasn't. After Danzig Four has not has not returned. No, it's uh, it's. I think it's because of the. I think with Danzig, it's really like the the punk ethos in him dancing in a real studio in like an old analog studio, him coming in, killing only one take and getting the fuck out of there. And also realizing like, again, he's on an album 
with no bullshit. There's not even, there's barely distortion on it. This is a great album. He doesn't have any reverb. He's not doubled, except for the chorus it's of like crazy. Twist a Cane. Yeah. He's, he's boned, the whole record is bone dry. And I think that that poisons him. Because he's like, oh, I'm the best. I don't need any. I don't need <laughs> any help at all. And then, in the in an era of like digital recording where you don't have like any of this warmth or whatever, like you have him coming in, recording, it, like just tracking his stuff one take into a digital mic. Him telling people, get all that shit off of my voice. Print it. No mastering. <laughs> get it out there. It just just throw your plate the same closing way. at nine. Get that shit on on digital tape. We're <laughs> out of here. Yeah, I it, totally. You're right. And there's you know there is a it's interesting with Danzig too also, and then it it gets more and more where n there was no like you said there's no bullshit on Danzig one, but then right. Danzig two, here comes Killer Wolf, which is real weird, and yep. uh, I'm the one, which is like his bluesy whatever where he literally wrestles an alligator in the video if you guys haven't seen that fucking rocks and then danzig three you know that we have sistinas and a couple other little weird moments and then by danzig four like the 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 danzig five stuff is starting to creep in there you see it coming and and then he's gone but danzig one no fucking bullshit no like not even ruben couldn't even get the ballad on there there's no ballad he was it was just fucking all dark straight ahead weird rock songs it's 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 perfect it's it's him trying to uh it's because a lot of it is morphed sam hain is sam hain the most dance i feel like to me now in my older we uh, i in, in my older years i realized that the magic of danzig all kind of comes from the vibe of sam hain records like that's the purest like it's uncontrolled, untethered oh, versions yeah. of the things that make him special. And so it's just, it sounds chaotic. And it's at like, I saw someone in the chat say, like, where should a drone, a person who likes drone metal or whatever start? Honestly, start with Sam Hain 3. Yeah. November Coming yeah. Fire. Start with that. And then you, it is the, it is just the power of Danzig, uncontrolled, like it hasn't been harnessed yet. <laughs> but then I feel like the purest well, version... Final Descent has some like some moments where it's like, oh shit, this guy this guy is pretty powerful. He's mighty. Uh but I think that it's very cool that he gets a song that he pushed. He was like, fine, Rick, the guitars will sound like they're on the clean setting, but we are putting possession on the record. Possession, I think, <laughs> is is like it's a perfectly composed and uh, interpreted Sam Hain song. It's the Is it full, a Sam Hain song? It was originally Twist a Cane and Possession were originally written to be like these are Sam Hain songs. Yeah, there yeah. is a Sam Hain version of Twist of Cane that still exists, and it is weird. If you have not heard that shit, dude, it is. It'll I'm not sure fuck. That I have. It'll fuck you up. It's like not the riff, <laughs> but it's all the words, and it sounds like it sounds like Halloween too. But it's like twist of pain, <laughs> and it's it 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 is a, a real journey. I think it's on. Oh, is that? There's like a collection of demos, right? I think yes. I have heard that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's just like so, the core. It's just the two chords, like dun 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 dun. dun. It's crazy. It's the verse the whole time. <laughs> like. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, that's I got a little bit of that COVID still. Oh no! Um, yeah, you got back from tour and got that. COVID, so yeah, got that ran. possession. <laughs> got that possession. Got that Rona so possession. My, one of my best, well, my closest friend, are like in in like eighth grade was this guy named Death Rocker Paul, and yes, everybody called him Death Rocker Paul. Nice. <laughs> um, so Death Rocker Paul. And I were listening to Danzig. It was my thing. He was already like, no, Danzig is weak. Slayer's too weak. I only like like the goriest earache records shit. He was already there, and I, I aspired to be there, so I was trying. But I still right. love Danzig too much to let go. And we were listening to Possession, and I had never noticed the little incubus. 
Mac you know, Mass in the background of his session, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where there's those like robot voices. Have you ever heard? I love that? it. I did. I've I've noticed it. Gross. It's it's like a woman's voice or something. I'm sorry that you're you're freezing a little Does bit too. But you're exist? okay. You're, you're freezing a little bit. So Your audio's coming through. We were listening to we're that. Too far and he in. was pointing those. <laughs> Oh, it's all. Ah, damn. Uh, you can you can hear I me can, though. Should I just keep? I just can keep, hear you. Just keep, keep going. going. There we go. We're back. Okay. So anyway, we were listening to that song, and he was saying, you know, do you hear those weird the little the little things? And I was like, I don't hear it, man. And he's like, no, there's like little voices back there. They're like spooky little possessed voices saying shit. And I had listened to the record so much, and I was the authority on that record. I was the Danzig guy. I was like. There's nothing there. I've listened to this record. You can't tell me there's something there. And I just couldn't fucking hear it. And we got into a huge fight. I remember I left his house. I was having a sleepover. And I walked home at like 11 p.m. Because I was just like, fuck this. You're an asshole. I'm out of here. Walked <laughs> home. Because I was like, there's nothing there. You're fucking with me. And I threw uh, what has now become a very normal thing for me to throw a fit and walk home in the middle of the night. But right. that was one of the early ones. And we made up uh, like two nights later by getting a giant jar of beef jerky from his mom's pantry, and we ate the whole jar in an abandoned storefront, uh, riding BMXs around inside of it. That's great. Do, when did you finally hear the voices on that track? <laughs> I mean, I think I think later on that week, like I was so pissed about it that I listened to it in headphones over and over until I heard it, and then just like the Hetfield thing. After you hear it, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, how can I, you can't not hear it. So You can't not. It took not, me a minute, though. It's Hetfield doing a Danzig impression, which is wonderful. It's wild. It's the best. I love it. But I, I think he, he sings on a couple songs. Doesn't he on that record? There's, like, multiple. He apparently does backup vocals on Am I Demon and Twist a Cane. Like, he, he's the double on Twist a Cane, right. I think. And, but oh, you can cool. only really hear him on possession. It's the only, I think that's the only part where he sings by himself. Because it's like mega Hetfield, like straight Metallica screaming. It's perfect. Yeah, it's right. It is right before they start. Do, he has to start doing like vocal lessons for the Black Album. So it is like weirdly the last time that anyone hears like uh that classic puberty like i'm singing wrong james headfield's voice and i think that that's fascinating interesting i did, i guess i i mean i'm bad with timelines but that so that was post injustice for all obviously yes and pre black album yes huh. i think yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense because what this is 88 this is 88 right 88 yeah yeah, this comes out after, this comes after uh, Justice. Um, okay. So it's like he like does, I think they're literally doing Justice and he like runs to the, he gets to go to the studio uh, <laughs> to fuck around in there, which is crazy. Um, I, I think that this is, I love all of those little touches on this album. And it is really fun listening to the every time i every like era of me when i listen to this album i have a new favorite song is that kind of how you are when you listen to this record too totally yeah i mean when i was a teenager i listened to mother obsessively and then when mother became a huge hit in like 98 or whatever i was like nope no more mother can't listen to mother anymore right and then i moved on to something else. but yeah totally you know Every I've gone through it with every single song of this record after, you know, at some point, just like obsessively, like, wh what is this one? You know, dude, totally. I, I feel like the last time I listened to it, Possession was my favorite song because I was like, this is the most <laughs> pure Danzig song of all. Like, this is what he I, I was like, I, I was. I was like, this is what you wanted Sam Hain and the Misfits to really sound like. And I think it, I was just rooting for him uh, because it's it's a fully realized, uncompromised, well-produced Danzig vision. But now I'm like, Evil Thing is fucking sick. <laughs> like, 
I love that chorus so much. I think it's great. Did I lose you? <laughs> no. Which of the main riff? Oh, like the like evil thing. The chorus I think is just so catchy and fun and full of like that. Cla- oh, it's great. It's got the pinchies. It's got what you want. Yeah, and it's got Chuck Biscuits doing like crazy fast fills too, which he's not known. He's you know he's like a bicep player. He doesn't do any fast fills, but in that song he's like, and it's like, oh, so he can do that. He just chooses not to. I think that 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 uh, that statement, choosing not to, is the thesis of this album. This album is like an exercise in the magic of restraint. Because a- yeah. everything that we're talking about, like the the production itself is restrained and clean. Like, dude, every time that John rips a solo, it's like an unbelievable, like full of personality guitar solo. But every riff is so just light. Like he's ho- every one of them is holding back. Like Danzig's kind of holding back a little bit because he's not fully blown out his voice doing his house like he's not <laughs> he's yeah the not, real like, <laughs> not yeah. he's not full danzig three which i love i know that that's where his voice starts totally. to go but i love it um but chuck is like there's so many moments on this record where it feels like <gasps> and here comes like a cra- he's gonna be a crazy feel nope, nope just like a like <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's funny so when I was listening fun. to it this afternoon. I was listening to Chuck a lot, and I was like, I, I, "I'm so, I'm so fucking stupid." But I was like listening to it and thinking, like, "Oh wow, that's kind of like I, that's kind of what I would do." Like, I, I feel like that's kind of something I would do in a song. And I was like, "Wait, you fucking idiot! Of course you would, because you grew up listening to this and obsessing, yeah. and like <laughs> you mimicked this guy's playing as a teenager. So of course, like." It, you're not like, oh, yeah, me and Chuck, like, we have the same instincts. No, asshole, you stole his instincts. And I, I fucking just love it. I love the way he plays. And, Dude. you know, I, he looks also, he looks cool when he plays. Dude, he looks matter, so all cool. Do. All of I them. Mean, what a cool looking band. <laughs> is kind of beautiful in, like, the most metal masculine way. Like, he is a very handsome man, and he's like, I mean, he's so white, he looks like a bag of lotion, like a Ziploc bag of yeah. lotion, except he's, like, kind of ripped, and goatees don't usually work for me, no offense, but it really just works for him. Everything about the band, like, they're so good-looking, they're playing so fucking well, all yeah. of the imagery was perfection. I mean, it's it kind of doesn't get better. It really doesn't. I mean, for me, peak... I, I Weirdly, this was... I think me uh, initially not getting what I thought I was going to get out of this album. I feel like that's kind of the the thesis for most uh, Danzig projects is like it's a little unexpected. Everything is not exactly what you think it's going to be. And right. I think that that kept me from participating in the other uh, Danzig records two, three, and four until college, and really, yeah, college. I did. I did not like. I got this record in high school. I got Danzig one, and I was like, I guess I may I, like. It took a little while for it to grow on me. Like senior year, I'm like, this is the shit. Um, I, I also had like pop punk friends like that wanted right. like. They were not into this. They were not into most stuff. So I just, I didn't get the time to really participate with this record until later. I I remember listening to Danzig 2 uh, my first time taking the bus in New York City. <laughs> and I think uh, I was like tortured by the bus, but I was also, I eventually started just completely tuning it out because... I was so into the fucking record. I like did not care that it took me the entirety of the actual record to get where I was going on the goddamn oh. bus. Don't ever take the bus again. I Don't, hope you've never done that. I've never done it again, but I associate it with a good memory because of Danzig 2. 
Fair, um, but for everybody out there, if you've never taken the bus in New York, just don't. That's not something you need to do. Don't take the bus. It's bad. Um, yeah, don't do it. I think that Danzig 2, you know what it is? For me, Danzig 2 is the best, and Danzig 3 is my favorite. It has my favorite songs on it, and I love... Danzig 2 has a couple clunkers, though. Like, there's yeah. some clunk... Like, she, she is the real clunker. Uh, there's another, like, real deep... Like, a, a filler song on the second half that's a clunker that I'm spacing on, but there's not a clunker on Danzig 1 at all. I mean, every song... I mean, it's only 40 minutes long, so, like... Why throw in they cut the, the fat garbage? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then three starts to have there's a few iffy ones on three. I love Sistinus. You don't like Sistinus? Oh, I love Sistinus. I oh, okay. was uh, I was doing a little home COVID cover of uh, Sistinus just today. Oh, it, it's it sounds like someone who's been in the house for seven days. It's <laughs> awesome. I've made a career off of that, baby. <laughs> I did a Carly Rae Jepsen cover last week while I had a fever, and it sounds like somebody made a Carly Rae Jepsen cover with a fever. So, yeah, doing pretty Ant, good over here. Ant reviews in the in the chat said that John Christ uh, told me that Chuck sat on a bar stool for extra height. Ant uh, reviews things. Number one, where, how do you know John Christ? And number two. <laughs> Where the fuck is Chuck? What happened to What happened to Chuck Biscuits? He just like left the industry. John too, but like John's still like giving guitar lessons at least. Where is that Danzig original lineup reunion? That's what I want to know. I mean, Psycho Vegas, come on, make that yeah. happen. Dude, well, you know what it is? I don't know if you and I have talked about this specifically, but Danzig doesn't he doesn't understand the I agree with you. I want that more than anything. The original guy is playing. Danzig is a person who won't ever understand that nostalgia because he's had such a weird trajectory. Like him but like you you saw Danzig on the street. Yeah. Like with the Caven guys when Steve thanked it like because he knows Steve from doing Mutoid Mentors, he knows, uh, like he knows Nate from the Doom Rider stuff. Yep. He was lit, and he literally said to them, "He's like, well, it's good to see you guys. My high school band is playing MSG. What the fuck is going on right now?" <laughs> yeah, he did. He was like, "Yeah, my high school." Yeah, and, he, and then he said, first punk band to ever sell out Madison Square Garden." I'm like, "Well, yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of caveats to that statement." Right. I mean, you're the only punk band that's been asked to be honest. Yeah, and you're probably the only punk band with, like, a line of kids' shoes. So, you right. know, there's a, <laughs> there's, there's a lot to say of that. Yeah, there's you're the, you're the only punk band that is also Target <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> exactly. But they, they, I think that that's the thing for him is, because, you know, he just, all he did, like, he started, uh, he started to the Misfits. For the most part, people aren't, like, like it's not catching on the way he wants. Like if you see, it, like he was interviewed for like a CBGB's documentary, and he was like, "Why the fuck are you talking to me? I've only played there one time on a Thursday. <laughs> no one gave a shit." Like yeah. to him, the Misfits didn't catch on the way he wanted uh, them right. to. It, he couldn't make them become the metal band, the metal and hardcore band that he wanted to. So he goes off and he does his own thing, and then the Misfits just disappear and the iconography is used for skate companies or whatever. So he's like, yeah, he signs away the rights to Jerry only after he's starting Danzig, his own band. He's like, yeah, you can have the band, but I, I want to keep the iconography because of all the, this, this, the skateboard merchandising. So he doesn't right. think the band is ever going to succeed. And he, he like has his band called Danzig that, is named after him so he's like i'm the popular one and then in the mid 90s people start asking him like hey when are you gonna get back together with your high school band after mother's huge he's like fucking never what are you talking yeah, about why would i who cares totally. you want me to hang out with the guys who started a christian rock band you want me to reunite with them <laughs> and play the songs you know, I, I still, wrote when i, I was a... 13 years old get the fuck out of here <laughs> like, <laughs> i have a christ the conqueror cassette 
from like an original Christ the Conqueror cassette. Do you? Oh my god. Yeah. We I just have to find it, but I know I still have it. It is insane. We just did it for uh this we have like a, a sh- like we have like the Bad Album podcast. And yep. we just did it for that and realizing oh, that like half of those songs got used for Michael Graves Misfits is oh. fucking crazy. I mean, not to derail us completely, but have you done a deep dive on like weird right wing acoustic fucking Trump act Michael Graves? I know about it. I haven't listened to any of it. I don't oh, know if so I can bring I haven't myself. listened to it either. I just have like seen his Instagram and seen that it exists and it's <laughs> so depressing. Christ the Conqueror but- live at MSG. I agree, Adam. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Yeah, after, right after the original Danzig lineup tour, then a Christ the Conqueror reunion, and then, I mean, the Sam Hain one already happened, which was awesome. I saw that. Yeah. It, uh, like, Sam Hain is his baby. Sam Hain is, he still wishes he the band was called Sam Hain. But yeah, he understands. Of course, totally. He's like, but Danzig is my name. Like, Rick Rubin talks him into just calling the band Danzig so he never has to rename him. And that's why the reunion won't happen because he's like, he number one, like he still doesn't fully understand why he thinks, the it's mis- him. he thinks it's all him. He doesn't think that anybody added anything to it other than him. Right. Yeah. He's like, anybody can play a fucking good guitar solo, like whatever. And in a way, yes, <laughs> like there are a lot of good guitar players out there. Like, but it's also, you know, like he doesn't understand why the he's literally stood on the street and told you, like, I don't really understand why this band is playing MSG, but fucking whatever, man. <laughs> right. Whatever. And but you're right. And I never really thought about it that with Sam Hain, it's completely different. He's like, that's why he's done that a few times and why, you know, there didn't seem to be this battle because he was like, yeah, fucking Sam Hain reunion shit. Yeah, I love that band. But the Misfits. Yeah, you can kind of see he's just like, I don't know. And even seeing them live, it was really fun. Right. But you could kind of see that he was just like, yeah, sure. Fuck it. Let's do these songs. You know, it wasn't like uh, how excited he gets for a Danzig performance. Yeah, he still thinks that Danzig is the band and he just doesn't he just doesn't need he doesn't think he needs the like uh, the uh, like Chuck or John anymore. You know, like it's. And I get like John Kelly is a sick fucking drummer. I get it. I get sure. one to keep Absolutely. John Kelly around. And he's like, like Steve Zing has played in every one. Like he was in every Danzig project except for the Misfits. So I get it. Um, yeah. And to him, he's he like, you know, I, I he he doesn't see he, he never sees really the marketing value in something. It's really like the. The Misfits thing only happened because probably someone was like, listen, they're going to let you play Madison Square Garden and they're going to pay you like a million dollars. Will you just play these punk songs with these with these guys? Like, will you just fucking do it? And he's like, yeah, (laughs) like if you pay him enough money, (laughs) he'll do it. No one's going to pay him. Dave Lombardo. Sure. Yeah, I don't care. Like, we we don't need Robo. He doesn't matter. All right. Fuck it. Whatever. (laughs) Like, um. I, 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 if someone was like, if, if you, I, the thing is, if now you're like, if you went up to Danzig and go like, will you do an original lineup reunion? He would go, no. And then he would (laughs) wait for you to go, okay, we'll pay you like a million dollars and you can play MSG. And then he'll go, yeah, (laughs) yeah, I'll do it. (laughs) I mean, somebody out there, give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Pay Danzig $1 million and get what I, I, I have a hundred percent tried to get John Christ to play on a two minutes cover. I've tried many times. No dice. None of the, none of the emails are active and he does not run his social media. So it's just, there's no he way to get like in, a, in touch with him. A niece or something that can like, uh, you know, work that out. I would love, I, I would love to, he's one of the best. He's one of the most underrated guitar players. He's got so much fucking personality. It's and it's, it fucking rules. I play pinch. I have to try really hard not to make every single note I play a pinch harmonic because of how much <laughs> I love playing stupid pinch harmonics from listening to Danzig songs. It's a mess. Well, and there's this relates to there's a really important part of this record that we haven't talked about, which a lot of people don't talk about. But the fact that it had a companion 
VHS home video that everybody had and watched relentlessly was huge. And it started, you know, lots of bands doing that. But, I mean, it was fucking brilliant, and it was perfect for the time. Yeah. And it was so unbelievably enjoyable to watch. It was so stupid, yeah. but really appealing, and they all looked amazing. It was in black and white. You got to see him backstage being just Danzig, but you got to see him being moody by the pool and the statue. You got These to see are my John books. Christ. <laughs> and John Christ just kind of being a, you know, uh, a, a kind of artist, you know, a little bit cranky, like I'm all practicing. And then you got to see Erie Vaughn <laughs> being a fucking asshole, smoking, drinking, not practicing like John. And Chuck Biscuits being a a ridiculous moron. And it, it, I mean, it really, it just makes everything so much more iconic because then you have this behind, you know, behind the curtain look at what was happening. And and I mean, for me, it was as much a part of the experience as anything else. Yeah, dude, totally. Is that the first, is that like the inciting incident for like, CD, DVD, combo pack. Is that, that, is that the first one? Is I don't know. Like- That's a good question. It was the first one we had, and we watched it every day after school. We had that, and then we got uh, the Cowboys from Hell one. We watched that relentlessly. Right. And then Sepultura Alive in Barcelona. That, those were like the, the really big ones for us. But yeah, that first Danzig video and the Lucifuge video, for that matter, they, I mean, those were the first ones we had. But I, I'd be curious to know, like, if that was one of the first and if it, you know, let record labels know, like, hey, this is another way we can make a lot of money. Yeah. Make these kids make a, a like, like, f- release a th- It makes a lot of sense. And it makes a lot of sense yeah. that this would inspire, because everyone from the generation that always had a DVD with their CD, uh, like, grew up with this album. Like there is no, there's no one from like your generation or my generation that does not fucking love this album. I don't know a single person who, I, I, I will know people who will hate the Misfits, hate every other thing that Danzig has done, but everyone can agree on Danzig one. It is the most, probably the most agreeable album in the genre, I would say. It. I agree with you. It has to be. I mean, and he also, I mean, he also cultivated a character that a lot of front men hadn't at that time. You know, Mm -hmm. he was this, he was this kind, I mean, I don't know. He was a character and the video perpetuated that. And he was like spooky, but kind of a little bit macho, but also, you know, a faux intellectual. Whoa, seltzer brag. What is that? Is that a two liter? Is that 1.5? Polar. It's just a regular, it's just a leader. <laughs> you know, I've been off seltzer and then after tour and COVID, I've just been back on it. I'm a real seltzer bender right now. Dude, Polar, I can't like, I've had, <clears throat> I've been through two soda streams because I really want to just not be buying <laughs> any, like cans or bottles or whatever. Soda streams, the ones I bought, at least the models I bought were dog shit. They broke. I'm like, I got so many bu- so i just like i out of like frustration i was like you know what oh shit Polar's hold on a second the- oh, don't stop are. talking my neighbor's knocking on the door oh no his neighbor there he goes in his cute little shorts um but yeah polar is my favorite uh seltzer let's see polar water does rule um uh let's see anyone else here have erie vons i didn't know erie von had a book that's crazy I may have talked to her about it, but that's my read of why the band changed in the first place. Um, I gotta go back. Uh, Dan, si- someone named Silas in the chat said that Danzig was 22 when he started the Misfits. That is literally not true. That is no, he was younger, dude. Yeah, right? not dude. A hundred percent. He was writing the Misfits songs on electric piano. Uh, <laughs> like when he was a teenager. Yeah. Like, no, that's there's yeah. the full version of the misfits. Didn't like, like earth AD era playing, uh, like all the shows on Halloween, like 
late uh, like in the in the eighties, misfits, like that doesn't happen until he's like twenty two. But my God. So that was, uh, my neighbor. Uh, uh, Silas also says, uh, sign my petition to make Aaron Turner the voice of old man gloom. What? He is. He sings in the band. It's a, no, there's a, so you know the thing Old Man Gloom is named after? The giant puppet in Santa Fe that we burn? We've been burning it for a hundred, over a hundred years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, the guy who did the voice, I don't know if he died or he just retired, but he. Oh. So they were open auditions to get somebody to be the new voice of Zozobra and of Old Man Gloom. And, uh, yeah, I thought that if they didn't choose Aaron, that it would be a fucking crime. But they didn't. They didn't choose him. That is fucked up. It should have happened. He also didn't show up to audition, so, you know. Doesn't matter. They should have offered him the part. I agree. Yeah. Silas, I'm with you. My neighbor just came down to ask me if I had any COVID tests because they know I have COVID, so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> just fair. Kind of weird. Yeah, maybe that's not the best time to ask someone for that in person, <laughs> they, in front of their face. Um, just uh, the, yesterday, I had to get a key from him, and I was like, hey, you know, I got to get the key. Just, like, put it down. I'll get it. And he was – I can't remember where he's from. He's from Europe somewhere, but he was just like, no, we're going to shake hands. And I was like, no, dude, I've, I've, like, I've got COVID. He says, shut up. And he grabs my hand, and he starts hugging me. And I was just like – well, now Why you have it. <laughs> and now they're asking me for COVID tests. <laughs> right. Crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, Adam is, yeah, the first Misfits single is 1977, but that's like the recorded version of it. Like he's writing the Misfits songs when he's like 16 years old and he's doing yeah, weird so little shows. Like the the cough cool thing in 1977 is still him on electric piano with like two guys. It's like him right. and Arthur Googie and some Arthur Googie. Whatever. Yeah, it's weird. Um, Ant reviews. You just did four interviews with John Christ. Ant reviews in the chat. Going, to, I a lot of a lot of people lying. <laughs> there's some there's some lying going on in this chat. Maybe she's John Christ's niece. Maybe that's the one we've been we've been waiting for. Yeah, there you go. And uh, really, yeah, like, John Christ. Somebody does aunt. need to do some kind of like wellness check for Chuck, though. Is he because there was a rumor he died, right? Dude, I don't know. Where is he? What's he do? What is any what what is Erie doing? What's anyone doing right now? It's really nuts. Like, I wonder if Nate that had his money. base. Nate got his base for the Converge oh, record right. and then was like, I'm not going to ask any questions, I guess. <laughs> I wonder if the Danzig money, like if they, the money they made from the first four records, if that carried through. But I bet they got no publishing at all or no song, songwriting credits there's at just, all. There's, there's no fucking way. Maybe songwriting, no. but not probably not. Definitely not publishing. And who other than like the like mother doesn't get popular until Thrall Demon Sweat. The live that's version. Like that's like 96 the, or 95 or something. Like 94. Mother 94. I think that's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah. 88. So like that song becomes the hit. It becomes the hit from the live video with all of them looking all sweaty and sexy. Which that's is just, original. which is just the studio version with some live like hollering in the background. Right. The, yeah. They just put yeah. some like, like, um, <laughs> but Thrall, I think it's live on the actual Thrall Demon Sweat album, but they do the re release. The, the, all this shit is so fucking weird. But Danzig, I, I, I love him. He is my favorite musician. Uh, I love the way I love his iconography, even though he's stolen most of it. Like, here, you know what? We're going to transition. We're going to transition real quick into. Uh, oh, big Santos, a big Santos. Uh, uh, I just, um, uh, I'm looking at the album art right now on screen. Everyone, uh, everyone in the stream, can you see it now? I've updated the stream. Bam. See that? See the album art? I can't see it. Okay. Well, fuck you then. <laughs> um, Fair. But... 
you know, I like the Danzig skull is just like it's just a stolen mar marble look. Straight up, yep, straight up stolen. But yep. I mean, fucking perfect. Yeah, has there? Did, do we know if he's ever been sued for that or had to pay out for it? I don't know because I think the rights to the drawing of it's such an obscure. He did the right thing by picking like one of the most obscure Marvel comic books. He probably copyrighted the symbol before they did. They probably didn't even think about it. You know, they probably didn't even know. Yeah, you're right. It's that it's on like the cover he of did like, that? he's a genius, a g ge a yeah. genius hoodwink, a genius. Uh, like, <laughs> honestly, just dancing in general is a legendary bag chaser. <laughs> you know, I love. Yeah, it. he's like uh, he's like he's a little he's a little Gene Simmonsy in that way, isn't he? He he absolutely is, but he's not. The th I think that. I think the my favorite part about Danzig is he is an asshole, but in a way that is completely harmless and doesn't affect anyone around him. Yeah, ex like really, ex that's all the stories just... kind of. Yeah, they all kind of end with him. You know, they, they, they he never seems like a real shit. He just seems like he's completely out of touch. He's out of touch, it, it, but even it's. Like anyone who tours with Danzig, like they all say the same thing. Like he wants to, he wants to take care of us. Like everyone who's on tour with him, like he's looking out for him, even though it's like not in the exact way that they would like. Like when he's like, I'm going to buy everybody's writer. I'm going to the grocery store with the PA. And like, he's like, don't get, they don't want any of these veggie chips. They don't want any, like they don't want a wasabi pea. These motherfuckers want pop tarts. They want ranch. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. We all keep the tombstone pizzas. Those are the darkest of the frozen pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the good shit. We want the good shit. None of that red berry. Get his stupid. He's basically wearing glasses. That fucking nerd. Take your cauliflower crust and you shove it up your ass. I want a tombstone pepperoni. <laughs> tombstone pepperoni only. Don't be gross. I. Um. He's like, he always is mad at a sound guy and which might be unfair oh, yeah. to sound guys, but also haven't we all, we've all had many sound guys that we wish we could yell at. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, our, there is the story days. about, about the, I don't know if it's true, but that he traveled, like he had great sound at one show. And so he made his team buy that soundboard and take pictures of the settings and then brought it on tour and would only use that soundboard with the settings. And it sounded terrible because as anybody with ears or any knowledge of space and matter knows, sound sounds different in different places with different PAs. But he just insisted that like it had to be this one because it sounds the best and wouldn't diverge from that. That's so goddamn funny. That's yeah, so I don't know fucking that funny. I love it. It's one that of the famous sense. Danzig stories. I, I got, I love the, but that's so, that's just weird in such a yeah. fun way. Like it's like, I, like a also, child, like a blissed out little child. Just like this yeah. soundboard sound amazing. I want that one forever. Forever. It, it, dude, well, it's cause he got, he's like a legend again by the time he's like, 22 and then he go who else who else like has like a career where all three of their bands are iconic like everything you do is iconic that's insane yeah that's fair yeah that's such a yeah. what a fucking track record and like even even now like when any any moment where danzig could be like maybe i'm like losing it a little bit or whatever then someone comes back and go hey do you want to I will give you a million dollars if your high school band <laughs> reunites and plays <laughs> Madison Square Garden. He's like, I guess. All right, whatever. Like, hey, it's... Glenn, why don't you go out and make some horror movies? <laughs> well, can I put a lot of boobs in it? <laughs> all right, I'm in. You mean I, I mean, can just put? I can just put all, all. I just get to direct boobs. Great. Like every yeah, done. Every low moment, like in '94, he was like, uh, maybe the Danzig thing isn't working. 
mother is like a fucking mother 94 94 happens and then like years later it's like i don't know maybe this uh isn't working play on stage with metallica like the Meta- new boom for him and then it's like uh, then the Danzig legacy stuff uh, sells a ton. It all leads up like he keeps. Yeah, he keeps succeeding, and it, it it absolutely creates a person who thinks that no decision they ever make can ever be wrong. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. Like I wonder if he watches those Danzig videos and if he is like, sounds a little bit stupid right there, but uh, you know, or I wonder if he's just like if he's just. He just marvels at himself. I mean, it seems like he has no self-consciousness about him whatsoever. I think he's getting it a little bit as he ages. I think it's his humbleness is starting to show. Like, Because you'll see some interviews where he's like, I don't know. Like, he's starting to see, he's like admitting like, yeah, I'm a kid. What are you, I was a kid. What are you going to do? But he also still thinks it's sick, you know, at the same and he time. Also still- mesh rubber shirts at his age so you know listen there's a lot like there's there's a lot of men that refuse to let go of the past or make (laughs) questionable appearance decisions like me i keep trying to paint over my beard i keep trying to make (laughs) like human me wants to have a beard but then when i gotta be guarsenio it looks completely insane i'll never make the beard work god bless the 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 black metal the the Ab- abbots and the brody kings of the world that can <laughs> put corpse paint into their beard and look beautiful i can't be i'm not one of them i, I just look like kenny loggins uh like fell into some stamps but at the same time like danzig it's like what are you gonna do not do it no you're gonna fucking do it this is what you do you wear rubber shirts you wear guarcinio makeup what are you gonna do I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch that fucking Danzig. People are talking about the Danzig vampire movie in the chat. I cannot wait to watch that thing. Whenever oh, yeah. it's a Blu-ray, I will buy that thing on bootleg DVD. Whatever I got to do to watch it, have to do it. Have to, has to happen. Well, and as a total aside, last night I spent hours just watching old Headbangers Balls on YouTube. Yeah. And it was an amazing night. So anybody out there, lockdown, COVID, just don't have any friends, watch some Headbangers Ball tonight. It was great. It's a fu- it's it is a vibe, baby. It yeah. it feels great. Find it's the fun. ones with the commercials still in there, though. Those are the best ones. Dude, yeah, like Zach Weber brings up the da- the video. This is ma- this is the last time we're going to talk about solo dancing specifically on this episode so we're going a little bit over we got to talk about uh like mar we got to talk about the not getting him getting knocked up at the north side kings guy because even that's got to be like a low moment like fuck everyone knows that my muscles don't mean shit and then the video <laughs> goes viral and he's like popular again like <laughs> yeah it only worked for him it only worked to sell probably more records yeah people were like what who's the guy that got knocked out who's the buff guy that got punched in the face <laughs> well, also, shit. it's not like it was a big boon for the for the North Side King guy, too. It's not like that band did anything. You know, he no. That was kind of it. It kind of only worked for Danzig. Danzig came out on top. I agree. It's uh, it's the magic of this guy. Uh, I love him. I can't wait to see uh, just any other. Anytime I go to see Danzig live. Whether he sounds great or terrible, I love. I have a it doesn't, it's, yeah. it doesn't fucking matter because even that's something to, to talk about. He's my favorite. Yeah. It, he, when he's great, he there is nothing I like more than great Danzig stuff. But Absolutely. even bad Danzig is so bad that it's good to me. Yeah, bad Danzig, like the Texas thing with the French onion soup and the, all that stuff. Like even when he's at his worst. It's the best because it's it's like it's ridiculous in a way that only Danzig can deliver. You know, just uh, the show at Psycho that we saw together, the Misfit mm-hmm. show, coughing There's directly like, into the mic. <laughs> there was like nineteen things that happened during that show where I was like, "What the fuck? What? 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 He just fell on his face. What? The guitar's broken now. Glenn doesn't even notice. What is happening? It was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Glenn didn't get. I loved." 
Well, he eventually was like, oh, I guess Doyle isn't here. That sucks. <laughs> and then, Let's play another one. <laughs> yeah. I loved, um, I saw them at, uh, at the MSG show. I went to that. Mm-hmm. And it was fine. You can tell it's like the end of the run for them because he's starting to be a little mean to Jerry, which I just lived for. Like Jerry yeah. does his thing. He elbows, breaks, breaks a base. And then like they like the crowd goes, yay, it's applause. And Danza goes like, well, I guess we got to wait a couple of minutes now so Jerry can get another fucking base. We <laughs> get it, dude. <laughs> you're super strong you're on roids we get it <laughs> we get it <laughs> and then like he he's like had it with jerry at that show like he pulls doyle in to start last caress and then jerry starts walking over and then he goes jerry beat it we're working over here like <laughs> <laughs> i fucking <laughs> i was living for it i all right uh, well we gotta get the fuck out of here i uh, santos feel better thank you for yeah, I feel great. Out I'm of just your... disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's you know what I I we I still was like I I gave you the offer because I I like when I had the Rona I was like I'm so bored I would just I would love to just do anything but not think about have how I yeah. can't do anything. Well, and the bright side is that I didn't I got it the minute I landed home from tour, didn't get it on tour, didn't have to cancel shows. Right. Got it when I got home, which sucks, but it could be worse. So Yeah. Yeah. Incredible stuff. Folks, thank you so much for joining us. This has been high school C D review. Uh like thank you for joining me, Santos. I really I talked to, so I've talked about Danzig just so much. There's only so much I could do alone. So I need <laughs> And it we could do it probably for like 19 more hours. But you yeah, and I could. I yeah, need, for sure. Yeah. For sure. When, uh, I'll hit you up when uh, we got to do. I have many Misfits records. So come back. Well, let's those. do them. Let's do them all. Fuck yeah. Henry loves. Uh, all right. Henry and Glenn uh, is an amazing book. I have all those books. Uh, check them out. <laughs> Hell yeah. Jason Radio. Folks, thank you so much. We will see you next Thursday for Throwdown's Vendetta.